Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I am one half of Sam and Victor. Today we're going to be diving into my everyday jewelry collection. Jewelry collections are highly personal and through the years you get to collect different pieces. So I find it really fun to share about where I got these pieces, how I style them and the stories behind them all. Personally, I am a gold girl through and through and I do try to stay away from costume jewelry because in my teenage years, I used to wear a lot of pieces from like H&M and those things would irritate my skin nonstop. And I do try to find jewelry pieces that do last over the years that I can wear on a daily basis without having to take them off when I wash my hands. Um, but, but all the pieces you'll be seeing here today are 14K, 18K gold or gold filled pieces. So let's get started with rings. Let's start off with my favorite piece, which is my engagement ring. This ring is a 2.01 carat diamond. It's a radiant cut set on a gold band. And along the crown, you'll see 20 0.1 carat diamonds along the crown. Victor got this ring customized through my friend, Laura. She used this jeweler in Hong Kong and she gave him the hookup and he was able to design this with a few pictures from Instagram that I found and gave to Laura who gave it to him. It was totally a surprise. I didn't know what to expect honestly because there's not a lot of options besides the typical circle cut that you can try on in Hong Kong. So I was really surprised when he proposed in Japan. On the inside of this ring is inscribed the date that we got engaged and also the place which is Tokyo which makes this piece just really memorable. We don't have a wedding ring as of now, just because COVID hit and we were planning on doing a second wedding after the one we did in December of 2019, which never happened, but I guess we'll figure that some time later. I know I said I try not to buy costume jewelry, but my second ring is a costume jewelry piece from Christian Dior. It is from the Danseuse Etoile collection. I really loved that necklace that came out that a lot of girls wore on Instagram, but I just wasn't very sure if that's something I would like in the long run, so I opted for the ring version instead. On here you'll see is a very chunky chain detail and then with the CD on the front as well. I've been very cautious about wearing this. I've had this for two Christmases already. I bought it myself as a friendship present with my friend Laura. She got a different Dior ring. I've heard a lot of issues about the wear and tear of Dior costume jewelry. And I have to say mine has held up quite well. You'll just see on the inner edges of the chain where the edges are, it has started to wear out. And for my right hand, I do have this Jade Signet ring. I think this was given to my mom from my grandma and she just gave it to me. I love this one because it does lay really flat so it doesn't uh, bother me when I do my chores, but I do love that pop of green. And lastly, I was looking through my old jewelry box here in Canada and I found this little pearl ring. I believe this is also from my grandmother. It is, I think, 14K white gold. I don't usually like to mix metals, but I feel like this one's okay just because all you see in the front are these four pearls. And the cool thing about this design of this pearl ring is that every pearl is actually fastened with a piece of fishing wire that goes through each pearl. And in terms of how I care for my jewelry, this hand, I do take these off every time I take a shower or go to the bathroom and have to wash my hands just because Dior is still just a piece of costume jewelry. And then for my engagement ring, my jeweler did tell me to avoid as much water damage as possible just because water sediments do build up in the diamond and makes it kind of cloudy. And in terms of jewelry care, I do use an ultrasonic glasses cleaner that can also be used for fine jewelry. All you need to do is get a sieve and put your diamond jewelry inside it and run it for 30 seconds so that it shakes loose any dirt that might have gone caught inside your rings. And in terms of the placement on my rings, I generally place them on my index 
my ring finger just because I like having a bit of breathing room between the rings and I don't like if they chafe against each other and I feel like for costume jewelry these will rub off quicker if there's another ring next to it so I like to place them on every other finger. I also feel like to elongate fingers, it's nice to have a bit of breathing space so that it's not just one long horizontal band of metal. And for my bracelets, my bracelet stack is very minimal. I only have two bracelets as of now because I'm slowly starting to collect pieces that I think kind of go well together and aren't uncomfortable on a daily basis. These two pieces I never take off just because I am one very lazy person and ideally I could just leave my bracelets on 24 seven without having to put them on and off every day. The first one that I have here is the Cartier Love Bracelet in 14K yellow gold, size 16, I believe. I did a whole video on this last year. Uh, Victor got this for me for my birthday last year, so I've had it for about a year and three months. In terms of wear and tear, there are a lot of surface scratches on it just because since then I've never taken it off. And this second bracelet I actually just found when I was clearing out my jewelry box a uh, few months ago. It is this vintage gold herringbone bracelet. And what I really like about this one is that on one side, it's the classic herringbone, but if you flip it on the other side, there's this really gorgeous etching design on it. I don't know how to describe it, but it makes it look so much more interesting than your average herringbone look. My mom did say that it's probably from my grandma and I just left it in Canada for the last few years and have just rediscovered it. I was considering buying another bangle to go with the Cartier, either the Van Cleef Perle or um, another Cartier piece, but I feel like this goes so much better in a way just because, because this is a very soft liquid gold, it doesn't clash literally with the Cartier. Although I do have my ears pierced, I really don't wear earrings really that often unless it's for shoots. So I really have no earring recommendations for this video. As for necklaces, I do have a roster of necklaces that I wear very often and you probably see on my Instagram quite a bit. This first necklace that I have serves as my foundation piece that I never take off. It is the original space letter necklace in small by a brand called Baichari in LA. The version I have here is the 14K yellow gold with a 16 inch chain that can be shortened to 14 inches. And I got it customized to say my name, so it says SAM. Hailey Bieber also got one recently with her brand Road on there, so you've probably seen it from her too. This is the small version of it, but if you want something a little bolder, they do have a larger version for bigger initial necklaces. I bought this by Chari necklace back in January, 2019. So I've had this piece for even longer than my Cartier Love bracelet. I sleep with it, I shower with it, I never take it off basically. And it's pretty much in the same condition as the day I bought it. The next batch of necklaces is actually a DIY project that I did back in 2020 during COVID. I took a Prada keychain and flipped it and made two necklaces out of it. You might have seen the TikTok video for it. At that time, a lot of designers were taking um, hardware from vintage bags and vintage keychains and making them into designer necklaces. So I got these chains from the crafting district of Hong Kong. These are um, plastic, I think, because they're super light. But strangely enough, even though they're not gold filled or whatever, or even gold plated, they don't irritate my skin. And I love these pieces because they are so light and so easy to wear on a daily basis. But as you can tell, I'm an amateur jewelry maker. So the clasp has turned color. After the Prada keychain flip, a small brand from Singapore reached out to me and we collaborated on these two necklaces that we made from vintage Chanel jewelry. The brand is called Le Petit Treasures and she's based in Singapore. The first necklace is a bold and chunky statement piece with a small Chanel logo on the side that you wear kind of like off center. This piece is also gold fill and I like how the chain, although it is very chunky, is actually quite light. 
The second piece here is more dainty and she has added a little pendant with a pearl on the bottom. Recently, I've been wearing this piece a lot. You might have seen it on my Instagram stories and I like wearing this with my Baishari necklace. It does have a very Baroque and Victorian vibe to it with that little pearl at the bottom. And it's just a really fun and cute little detail. I'll link her Instagram below if you're interested in this type of upcycled vintage designer jewelry and you can go support her as well. And in terms of how I style my jewelry, I do try to strike a balance between having designer pieces but then also having pieces from you know, family heirlooms or DIY pieces that have a lot more personal meaning to them. I think jewelry is highly personable and customizable. I would love to hear what is on your daily roster of jewelry and brands that you love to wear on a daily basis. Anyways, I hope you guys have a lovely week and I'll see you in our next one. Bye.